everybody, it is episode 204 of PodQuest. Nice. It's Tuesday, July 24th, 2018. I am Chris, with me is Druton. Hello. Walnut. Hey. San Diego Comic-Con happening. Yeah, there's a lot of Comic-Con stuff going on yeah. right now. We weren't there, but... No, unfortunately not. But we saw all the stuff on the internet about it. Yeah, yep. plenty of internet stuff. Uh, so that is probably going to be mostly what we talk about. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, before we do, though, either you guys have any pressing stuff you want to talk about that you did or didn't do? Nah, I kind of did uh, jack and shit all week, to be honest, so it is quite fine that uh, SDCC will take up the time. How about you, Rich? Oh, yeah, I had a wedding this week, so that took up most of my week. So Fair. I just, I, I played some Monster Hunter, that's it. Yeah, I, I didn't really do a whole lot myself. It was Erica's birthday, so we were out all weekend. Yeah. So, um, I am going to go see Princess Mononoke tomorrow in the theater. Oh, yeah. That's right. They're... Studio Ghibli is doing all... Or uh, Fathom Events is doing all those. Yeah, and the the, the July movie is Princess Mononoke. Yeah. And tom I think it's tomorrow night and Wednesday night they're showing the dub. Okay. And, like, it, I didn't realize they do it this way, but they're doing, like, certain nights they're showing the subtitled version of it, certain nights they're showing the dub version of it. Interesting. And those movies were dubbed really well, so I'd rather go see them and not have to read. Yep. Uh, but I guess let's just jump into it. Um, so there's going to be a Fallout 76 beta in October. Yeah. Yeah, they were um, talking about that at E3, that they were going to have the Fallout 76 beta. Um, but you have to have pre-ordered the game in order to get into it. Yeah, unfortunately. It's not full-on open beta. It's You have to, you have to pre-order the game. So I don't have access to it. Or at least yet. I imagine there will be some sort of open break it early test application or whatever oh, yeah. they called it. That is what they called it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because they're going to want to make sure that game is only as broken as a Bethesda game should be. Yeah, I mean, one of their like community people said uh, that they're going to start small and grow over time as they prepare for launch. Yeah. So I imagine they're going to run... They'll prop so I forget, when does this come out? November? November, yeah. Yeah. So, like, over the course of October, they will probably do, like, small weekends. Yeah. And then they'll build it up to the point where it's like, all right, you know, the last weekend of October is an open beta stress test. Like, let's see how many people we can get onto the server and see how well it holds up. So at least that would give them a couple of weeks to, you know, th start up some, new some extra servers or something. Yeah. Especially since they're running it in the weird, like... A stress test for them is going to be weird, depending on how their architecture is, since every game is going to be, like, a small localized thing with just, like, handfuls of people to begin with. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it'll, it'll, I don't know how weird it'll be, though, but yeah, it'll be kind of weird, I guess. I don't mean the game, I mean how a stress test would be. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. Because, you know, if their stuff is spread out over hundreds of, like, virtual servers... Because of how small every like collective session is, like maybe a stress test won't have the same impact as just these smaller tests where they can monitor what users are particularly doing. Well, yeah, I mean they don't need to see how many users that they're gonna have type of thing because each server is only gonna have I think hundreds. I think it's less than that. I think he said dozens. Yeah, maybe it did say dozens. Uh, so it's it's not going to make like. They might only have 64 players per thing, or that's more than, uh, that's, that's five dozen, so, yeah, that's just over five dozen. They may have just 64 players per server, so, like, they might al be able to allocate it a little bit better to where they don't have to test how many people, they just have to make sure it works properly. It, it, no matter what, they need to make, test how many people, because... They haven't explained exactly how the servers are working, so it's because you take your stuff with you no matter what server you go on, like, I don't know if it's just a login and it connects you to a random server, so they're going to need to know how many servers they need to handle how many players are going to be on. Well, yeah, but they're not... Like, like think about it this way, Diablo 3 is a four-player game... It was broken the day it launched because so many people were trying to hit their servers. That's true. I didn't. It, think, I forgot yeah. about that. And like, it, just because a game has limited root character slots in a room does not mean one server dying couldn't affect the entire server arc and screw the whole game. So, like, 
a stress test will be neat for sure. Um, speaking of betas, Dragon Ball Fighters is getting one for the Switch in August. Open this one will be an open beta, so anyone potentially can try it out. Okay. Uh, which you never played? I haven't played Fighters yet. No. You should you should jump on that beta. You got a Switch? Yeah, I will. I will. Um, and I, I tend to jump on any free beta or try to jump on any free betas I get access. And I, I missed this at E3, but apparently. The game is going to release with Goku and Vegeta Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, which it, they are not unlocked by default in the regular, in like the PS2, PS4, Xbox, PC version. Okay. okay. You actually have to unlock them or pay for them. Okay. Oh. Um, and it's also going to come with a download code for the SNES game Dragon Ball Z Super Boated, Bo Buto Den, Buto Den, which okay. I've never heard of. And that's not Ultimate Fighter, whatever. Well, there was, it, I mean, the the one that I remember most from Super Nintendo was Hyper Dimension, which was, like, the cool 2D fighter where you could actually fly. So, like, you could take off in the air, and, like, the levels were very tall. So both characters could actually fly into the air and fight in the air. Um, but this is just, this is another fighting game. Another, dra so that's basically all Dragon Ball games are, are fighting games. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's not really much you can do with a Dragon Ball Z. Oh, oh, okay. This does look like it, it is a fighting game. Uh, nope. tried to remember the name of. Were you thinking of like Ultimate Battle, Ultimate Battle Twenty Two, or something like that? Yes. And Final Bout was the other one on PS Two. There, there were a lot of them on PS One. There were a lot of those Japan yeah. only games. I'm thinking on of the SNES one that is currently the worst fighting game oh. Giant Bomb has ever played. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know about that one. I, I doubt it would be the worst fighting game though. It's fucking terrible. No, I'm saying I doubt the free DLC code would be for the first oh, fighting, oh, oh, oh. worst yeah. fighting game. Uh, I mean... You are probably correct, but who knows? It all would depend what kind of weird rights things are tied up in. I mean, honestly, like, I enjoyed that game enough that it's a shame it's on Nintendo so it'll never be on sale, but, like, I would probably purchase this on sale. And then, to go along with the, the Dragon Ball Fighter stuff, uh... Base Goku and Vegeta are coming as DLC. Yay, so now I can play as more Goku and Vegeta. I mean, I, I was telling you guys before, like, the one cool thing is Vegeta is, like, original Saiyan Saga Vegeta, where he's got he's got the, the big shoulder pad Saiyan armor. Yeah. And the tail wrapped around his waist. Yeah. So, maybe one of his moves is to turn into a giant monkey. Could be. Because, I mean, like, they, they all have those, like, super moves that if you fill up your gauge mm -hmm. and, and hit the right fireball motion... Um, and, like, for Goku's, he does, like, a bunch of stuff, and then goes Super Saiyan 3 and does a Super Kamehameha. Yeah. So, you know, Vegeta doing something stupid and then turning into a big monkey and kicking you, like, I can see that being a move. Yeah. yeah true. Even, like, uh, I think it, Boo does something, like, I think he, Boo either explodes or turns you into chocolate. I forget which one is which. Because he, he has both of those moves. Where, like, he just kind of, like, lets off all of his power and, like, knocks you away. Yeah. Um, and does a bunch of damage, but there's also a move where he'll turn you into candy and eat you. Well, his candy move probably is one of his finishers. Well, no, so they all have, like, every character has one where if you fill up the gauge, um, and then hit, I think it's a backwards fireball motion with, like, any of the buttons. It's like a super move. Okay. That's why I said, like, Goku does, like, a co like it's an auto combo, and then he goes Super Saiyan 3 and does a Kamehameha. Okay. And if you finish a character with that move, you get, like, the climactic cinema finisher where, like, it shows, like, the giant Kamehameha wave, like, blasting off into space and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, you guys want to talk about trailers first or you want to save them for later? Uh, let's just get them out of the way now. All right. So there were a whole bunch of trailers. There was... It's probably safe to say it's kind of a fuck ton of trailer. So it's not as many trailers as has as there have been in past years. Yeah. Um. But th there was also no Marvel. Yep. Panel. Yeah. Which you know they normally had at least one or two trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But so we 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 had our first Shazam trailer. And I enjoyed it. I didn't hate it. I thought it was silly. Which is something that DC movies need. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I hear there's a lot of people complaining about it being a comedy, but at the same time, it's like, you're, you're making a movie about a kid who turns into an adult and fights crime. Like, y you can't not turn that into a comedy. And really, like, I, I mean, I haven't heard anybody complain about it being a comedy. A lot of things I've read online, people are actually, like, up on it because it's not what DC has been doing for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
But like, it's probably not going to be a full comedy either. No, no. It's no. just that's what they're showing us in the trailer because that's the biggest complaint is DC movies have no sense of humor. Yeah. And, you know, they, the best sense of humor they could have had, they don't have, is having Sinbad be the old wizard Shazam before he gives the power to Billy. You don't know that's not Sinbad? It's not. I looked it up. You, you really don't know. Just because it's it's on the credits doesn't mean it's not. It's not Sinbad. You don't know. It's, it's uh, I don't even remember the actor's name, but he's the same guy who plays the one guy in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 who's going to be in Captain Marvel. Oh, uh, Lee Pace? No. Um, the African-American dude. Oh, okay. I know who you're talking about. I didn't know yeah. he was going to be in Captain Marvel. I forgot about that. Well, yeah, he's because uh, he works at Ronin. So. I can't pronounce that guy's name. I've never been able to. I can't remember how to pronounce I know exactly who you're talking about, though. He's been in a yeah. bunch of movies. Yeah. He was, in, he's, he was in Fast and Furious 7. He's in two superhero movies a month apart from each other. What else is he in? He's in Shazam, and he's in Captain Marvel. Are they a month apart from each other? Yeah, Captain Marvel comes out in March, Shazam comes out in April. Wow. For some reason, that never... I never, like, registered that. I, I had to look it up the other day when I was figuring out who, who it was that he plays, or who plays him. Because, um, in the trailer, the voice kind of sounds like Sinbad. So I got super excited and had to Google it first. It's not Sinbad. Uh, but, I, yeah, I, I enjoyed the trailer, too. Yeah. Drew, what did you think, since you're not really up on trailers? I thought it was all right. It definitely has. It seemed more lighthearted than most DC stuff, which is, is yeah. good in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Uh, after Shazam, there was an Aquaman trailer. I don't know if it was after airing, but so Aquaman, Aquaman, Aquaman. I thought it, it was cooler than Aquaman had any right to be. Yeah, it definitely seems interesting. It seems neat, but I I'm afraid they're gonna they're trying too hard. I don't know. I mean, he, it seemed very in line with how that character was portrayed in Justice League. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's just, I feel like, I don't know. just feel like DC's going to, like, try too hard to make it something that it might not be. I mean, that's always possible. They've done it before. And you, you can't necessarily trust a DC trailer because all of DC's trailers end up looking really cool. And then most of the movies are a huge letdown. But, like, I don't know. Jason Momoa did a good job. Like, he was one of the bright spots of Justice League. Okay. Yeah, he was. And it seems like it's going to be more of him being just fucking cool surfer dude in this movie, so... Yeah, and that's... Like, I'm I'm not gonna say, like, I was upset or annoyed when I was watching it. I was just... I'm into it. But I'm being reserved as I am with all DC movies at this point. Because I I thought Batman vs. Superman was gonna be awesome based on the trailers, and I thought Justice League was gonna be amazing based on the trailers. I mean, by ba- Justice League, you should've fucking known better, so that's on yeah. you. Yeah, but here's the thing. I didn't hate Justice League. No, I mean, it, it was not an atrocious movie, but it was not amazing. Yeah. Um, and, like, after thought, like, okay, maybe the trailers kind of did show that it wasn't going to be the best of the best. But it's still, like, hype brings it up. So I'm trying to keep the hype from going too high. Basically what I'm doing with just being reserved with these DC trailers from now on. So, was it just me, or... Did that CG look really fucking bad at times? Sometimes it did. Okay. Um, but it's like, also a trailer. So, I mean, the movie yeah. is still six months, five-ish months away. You would think they would put, like, the work into the clips they're going to put in the fucking trailer, though. They also don't have um, Industrial Light and Magic sure. working on their shit the way Marvel does. Sure. Which, I mean, that, that was the thing that a lot of people were pointing out. Like, um, in Civil War, they did the Young Tony thing. Where they made Robert Downey Jr. look like he was 20 again. Mm-hmm. And then in Justice League, they had to digitally remove um, Henry must- Cavill's yeah. mustache. Yeah. And one of them looked amazing. One of them looked like garbage. It was not the one that should have been. Like, Robert Downey Jr. should not have looked as realistic as a 20-year-old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As he did. And that's kind of what happens when you have one of the premier special effects studios literally owned by the company making your movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know who DC uses for that stuff. I, I, I'm sure Warner Brothers has somebody. Yeah, you would imagine. Um, hmm. But yeah, I think the CG will probably look better by the time the movie finally comes out. Sure fucking but, hope so, because there were times where it was, like, distractingly bad. Especially in some like, of those nineteen, scenes. Like, early 2000s looking bad. Or maybe they're just hoping you'll be distracted by Jason Momoa. But it was... Especially there were times where like he was in like the armor or whatever it is. And it's like, 
what is what why do you look so fucking weird right yeah now? i kind of hope that's one of those things that they hold off on till later in the movie and he's just kind of in street clothes for the most part yeah um because there's just something cool about like a dude busting into a submarine just in like a pair of cargo pants <laughs> like um there was also godzilla king of monsters which rich is that's all yours i can't wait for that that looks amazing it's ah! I'm so excited for it, because it's got Godzilla, it's got Ghidra, it's got Rodan, it's got Mothra. It's got Eleven. It's got, uh, uh, um, why can't I remember her actual name? Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown. I was gonna say Billy Bobby, Mer like, I was so confused with her name. It's got Millie Bobby Brown, it's, like, uh, oh my god, I can't wait for it. The only thing I was disappointed about that trailer, I didn't see Kong. No, because I don't think he's gonna be in this one. He could be. I know that was the rumor, but I don't think this is the one. I mean, at the end of Kong Skull Island, they brought all of this in. No, no, I so I, I know that. I'm just saying, like, I really hope he is in it. Maybe he's like a, like, maybe they're trying to keep it for, like, a secret type of thing or something. If anything. But it's Hollywood, there's, so there's no secrets. If anything, I think it'll be one of those, like, end of the movie reveals that, like, the it'll show, like, the the shadow of Godzilla in the ocean, like, swimming. And then it'll pull back, and he'll be swimming towards Skull Island. Uh, maybe. I mean, I don't really understand the premise of the movie yet. I only watched the trailer once, surprisingly for me. Um, but it, it seemed weird that like they had to find all the monsters to save the environment. Yeah, I, 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 like I don't really know. So I don't know, like if they're being attacked by aliens, and all the monsters have to find off the aliens, or if Godzilla has to, or if they're trying to kill King Ghidra. We don't really know too much. Is so, King Ghidra the three-headed one? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Um, so we don't really know what what's going on with this yet, but I'm excited for it, because it's just, oh my god, it's just, it's Godzilla, and I love Godzilla. And I probably yeah. won't see it until sometime after it comes out on Blu-ray, mm, but it's, yeah, I didn't like the first one. I It's hard to figure out whether or not they're sticking with the first one, though. I mean, this is, they're calling this a sequel. Yeah, it, like... And it's got um the guy in it. The Asian guy that he was in the first one. I don't think he was in a lot of the first one, but he's no, he was in the he was in a good portion of the first one. He but was... yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've just come to realize I don't really like monster movies like this. Like they never look very good. Well, there's something wrong with you. I don't think so. I think it's so. just Hollywood is bad at this. Like the monsters are barely in them most of the time, and I get it. Like they're super expensive to do, and CG monsters just inherently don't always look great unless you have the money to put into it and at that point the budget becomes so inflated you can't do a feature length film but like i don't know like i don't want to go see a mov movie called godzilla king of monsters to see a bunch of people fucking working in a lab to try and figure out how to stop the monsters that's i just want to see godzilla fucking fight all of the monsters and that's it i don't want to see people fucking at all unless they're screaming godzilla and running away well <laughs> then you should watch the original godzilla I mean, like, if I cared about the, yeah. the character at all, I probably would, but... But, I, I mean, I, yeah, it's it's hard to say what this movie is going to be like right now, because it's... This is the first trailer for it. Yeah. And there's really no information that we... Like, what we get get from this trailer is hard to say what we're actually going to get from the movie. Like, yeah, I mean, other than a cool a couple cool shots of Godzilla, you don't really... You see, you see like, silhouetted monsters for you, the most part you straight up see rodan you see kind of see mothra i mean like you see them but you don't see like a lot of detail of them like y you get like their shape more than anything and which is cool because you kind of get to see the scale that they are because they're yeah. usually like around like buildings or something yeah but at the same time like it's not like you got to see like a brief like clash of like godzilla fighting mothra or something yeah and that's why like as, as as excited as I am, I still got to be a little reserved with this because, like, they could try to turn us into, like, a two-part movie where they fight each other, and this is just them introducing all the characters. Who knows? Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, next up, Drew, we're going to need you to fucking dial in on this one. Okay. I, I need your opinion. Fantastic Beats, The Crimes of Grimmenwald. Uh, no. Yeah, your nay. Uh, nay. It's fucking guy. It's fucking guy. Uh, I mean... Like I like before we started recording, we were talking about it, and I'm I didn't hate the first one. I didn't I wouldn't say it was the greatest thing ever. I, I might go see this one, but I wasn't somebody who was gonna who rushed out to see the last one. I was a last minute invite because they had an extra ticket, and I was like, sure, 
Like, I will assuredly go see this one opening weekend sometime. Um, I just don't think we need another trailer for it. It's out in four months, and this is like the fourth or fifth trailer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we'll probably get at least... When's it out again? Like November? Yeah, we'll probably get at least one more trailer in October. I doubt that. I think this will probably be it. But it's just, you know, another two-minute trailer to show two more minutes of stuff in the movie. Like, unnecessary when the movie's this close. Yeah. Uh, movie trailers are bad. I mean, it's looking... <laughs> But see, they're not inherently bad. No, they are inherently a, bad. A first trailer is good. Like, a, a first showing two minutes of content from a movie that is not sequential is good to get people interested in something if they're not sure what it's going to be about. But when the movie is out in three months and there's already been seven minutes of content in trailers, that's when it's a problem. And that's a problem is because that's every movie now. If it went back, if it was just every movie gets like a, a 30 second teaser and then one two-minute trailer, that would be good. Like, we would be in a good position. But now it's just, every movie gets 13 fucking trailers, and you basically know the plot of the movie going into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if we don't get an... I mean, and hopefully we don't. I hope we don't get another Aquaman trailer. Because if that's the only Aquaman trailer we have between now and when it comes out in Christmas, like, that's perfect. I saw enough to know, like, okay, this doesn't look bad out of the gate. Like, I'm at least interested enough to go see it in the theater. There'll be a new trailer. Fantastic Beast comes out before Aquaman. Yes. There'll be a new trailer with Fantastic Beast. There almost 100% will be. I'm just saying I hope there isn't. There's going to be four theatrical release trailers for Aquaman. I know. In five freaking months. Yeah. It's absurd. That's, <laughs> I, but that's how all trailers... Like, that's how every, like, major production trailer is, though. Like, But they're never that close together. Especially these superhero ones. Like, you get... Like, leading up to the movie, the release, the final trailer is usually a month to a month and a half away. So, we'll get at least two more trailers for Aquaman. I don't know. I could say they might only do one. They might do one more with the Crimes of Grindelwald, and that's it. Just because, I mean, it's already the end of July, and there's no other big releases between now and then to tack it on to. Yeah. Other than a Harry Potter movie. Yeah. Yep. Like, at least no big releases that would... Well, from Warner. Yeah, like... from... From Warner, and that would go with this, like, that that would fit. Because, um, like, a lot of the other, like, big-ish movies that come out between now and then, like, the superhero movie crowd aren't going to be going to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the trailer for Grindelwald wasn't bad, though. I mean, it was more of just the same. Like, Jude Law as Dumbledore seems like a pretty good choice. I like him so far. Sure. The rest of the cast is mostly the people that were in the first one, and they all did a good job. I like Eddie Redmayne. Yeah. He's an okay wizard. The weird dude from Balls of Fury, he's cool, too. He's not a wizard. He's just a guy. Just yeah. Fucking ended up becoming friends with a bunch of wizards. Yeah. Like, and and then he got his memory changed. Did, did you read the books when you were younger? The Harry Potter books? Yeah. No. I know Drew didn't. Nope. Um, well, he's in the first movie, too. They, they mentioned Nicholas Flamel with, like, the whole sorcerer. Like, he invented, like, the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone, depending on what version you watched. Okay. Um, he is going to be in the movie. Okay. Which I thought was neat. He's like this super frail, frail old man hmm. because he's like five hundred and twelve years old or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after the first movie, I'm finally I'm I'm done with Harry Potter movies. I'll, I'll, I I have no interest ever watching any of them. I mean, I I really I knew guy. that after like the second Harry Potter movie, and then I've watched all eight movies that are out in that universe now. Nine. Nine. Wait. There's no. seven movies. I mean, sorry, there's seven books, but eight movies for the originals, and then the first Fantastic Beasts was nine. Oh, okay. I thought um, there were the six seventh... books and seven movies. No, there's seven books, and then the seventh movie was cut into two. Right. Okay. It's a, lo it's then, a lot. Yeah. No, it's too much. <laughs> and, like, I was actually kind of interested in, like, when hearing that the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was being made into a movie, and Sarah telling me what that was, I was interested in... A movie where we find out the origins of all these magical creatures, and then that was not what that fucking movie was at all. Nope. And it, I was like, this is a boring, bad movie. I'm not interested in what the plot in this movie is. I'm going to say this right now, your opinion's wrong, and it doesn't matter. You're, you share an opinion with a guy who thinks Monster Hunter is really good. No, so, he just said he doesn't really like the so movie. So where though. does that put, put you? Huh? Huh? You like Monster Hunter there. Transitive property. That's not how transitive property works at all. No, sure not is. at all. I, I will even agree with that. That's not how transitive property nope. works. 
No. You're the no. type of guy that thinks if you're born in 2010, you're 18 this year. No. Oh, God, I hate people. Uh, Next. There's a, there was a Glass trailer. Yeah, that actually, like, I haven't seen Split yet, which is weird. I should have seen Split by now. Um, but Glass looks really good. I Glass mean, looks cool. The trailer looked okay. I have no interest in I Like, I don't like M. Night Shyamalan movies. Me and either. Unbreakable, of the ones that I've seen, is probably my second least favorite. It's like that and The Village are at the very bottom of the list. I mean, he's been going, he's been doing better since uh, The Visit. A lot of people have been saying. The Visit? Yeah, The Visit, where the kids go and visit their grandparents in, um, in, at their home. And the grandparents are just acting weird and stuff. It's kind of like a found, not a found footage. Oh, but, right. I yeah. totally forgot about this movie. This movie was a good one. Yeah. And then. Th I actually I mean, didn't realize is... that was an M. Night Shyamalan movie either. And then this, this is pretty much a direct sequel to Split. So if you like to Split. You might like this one. Who knows? So, I didn't see Split. Um, Neither have I yet, though. Like, it looks like James McAvoy does a really good job as that character. Yeah. But, like, I didn't like the characters in Unbreakable. I thought the whole idea between Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson was fucking stupid. No. And that's coming from a guy who likes comic books. <laughs> like, I like superheroes, and I thought that movie was fucking garbage. Well, maybe the movie thinks you're garbage. And, like, honestly, that trailer, like... Other than the James McAvoy parts where he was just out of his goddamn mind, like, none of that interested me at all. Yeah. But, like, I, people are super into those movies, so I'm sure, like, people will go see it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, my hard drive space is low. <sighs> That's bad. Yeah, it is. Why is it so low? I don't know. All but that it, porn. No, you know what it probably is? I bet, oh, wait, you're not Vogel. <laughs> I bet uh, Dropbox is set to sing some weird stuff. Uh, you guys keep talking about Glass for a minute. I mean, we've. Seen I a have lot of no movies. opinions, so. I I I've always liked M Night Shyamalan, so like I've I've enjoyed his movies. Um, I'm just mad I haven't seen Split to have more to say about Glass. He he seems like a good person. I've literally seen one of his movies. Which one was that? Sixth Sense. That's a good one. It was okay. Wow, that's the only one you ever saw. The list of movies I've never seen is insanely long. So, yes, that is the only one I've ever seen. Well, then, you know what? Here's what you should, since Nope. You, <laughs> since you haven't seen a lot of M. Night Shyamalan movies, go see, try to find a way to watch um, Unbreakable and to watch Split. Over the next week, try to watch those two movies. I'll try to watch Split, and we can discuss it next week. I can literally guarantee you I will not do that. Man, why not? Because I just do not have any interest. Why not? Do you know what Unbreakable's about? Yes. Bruce Willis becomes a security man. Cool. So and, like, and then Split is just really cool from what I hear. I did hear Split was cool, but yeah. I just I, I just don't care about movies enough to like want to sit down and spend two hours of my time on something I don't know I will, will want to enjoy. I will enjoy. But you might love it. I might. And then you'll be so happy you did it. Or I might hate it and be like, what the fuck was I doing? Research for the podcast you love doing. Sure, but there's other things I could do. Like, play a bunch of the games I got for free on Twitch that I haven't touched yet. Let's face it, those are stream game those are Steam games you're never gonna play. The, uh, no, they are Twitch client games. You're still, you're never gonna play. Uh, what was the next trailer, Cobb, while you're uh, going through that? Uh, let's see. Listen, there ain't anything else I have anything to comment on. Alright, so I the next one was actually the Dragon Ball Z trailer. Okay. Um, the, the Brawly movie trailer. I saw, but, I did see that one. Um, there was also the Supergirl trailer. I'm gonna save the Dragon Ball one for the end. Okay. Supergirl I saw. I was actually, I'd watch, I'd rewatch that when, um, as you were walking in. And that, I, I mean, it was, it's a normal TV series trailer, so they... Threw in some season three stuff with some season four stuff, so it's kind of hard to tell what was going on. Uh, what's with her spacesuit? Yeah, so I'm wondering if that's an actual like, is she going someplace where she needs like a, a suit like that, or are they just trying to change her suit, or is that even her? Uh, who knows? Uh, like that's just. I mean, the the season's gonna be interesting because the super villain isn't really a like a super villain. It's. I, I mean, I don't really know anything about the. What was it? The uh, the Patriot or something like that? Um, no, the Patriot is a Marvel character. Yeah. Um, Agent Liberty. Agent Liberty. That's it. I don't know anything about him, but that sounds like it's supposed to be a, a hero's name. 
Yeah, I think he's I think he's like a vigilante, but I think I don't think he's on like the side of people with powers. Yeah. Uh, but they will be taking place in Liberty City and not National City. A lot of stuff. Oh, I hadn't which, seen that. Yeah, they were saying stuff about Liberty City a lot, from what I recall. Uh, which is is that where Batwoman is? Batwoman is, is in Gotham City. Is, she is Gotham still. I wasn't sure if maybe she left Gotham or whatever. I mean, honestly, I don't know if there is a Liberty City in DC. I remember seeing something about Liberty City and hearing them say Liberty City. No, there there isn't. Okay, then I just made all that up. But I thought they were going to be in a different city. In it's this not moment. a Grand Theft Auto crossover. Well, not. I mean, it's it's DC. They have some stupid city names. Liberty yeah. City could definitely be but, one of them. I mean, they fair. have Central City. They have Coast City. They have Starling City, which is now Star City. No, I mean in the mo- in the comics, it's actually just Seattle. Is it really? Yeah, like Green Green Arrow is just in Seattle. That's ridiculous. But there was there was a, a period in the comics, like recently, actually, like after the 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 com- the show did that whole storyline where they renamed it, where um some bad guys renamed it to Star City, and then when Green Arrow finally like got back and like fixed everything, they went back to being Seattle again. Okay. Um. But yeah, so most of those CW show trailers were like a mix of a trailer for the new season plus like a recap of the last season. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I am curious to see what ended up like what's with the suit. Yeah, like that that's the most interesting part. Obviously, it was the end so that of course it's going to be the most interesting. Cuz like it see I don't know, it seems incredibly expensive to have her in a suit like that all the time for just the amount of time that she is Supergirl. Yeah. And also other than the Flash, who has his mask off a whole lot, none of those, none of the heroes really have like full face masks that cover them up all the time. Yeah. Um, which seems like it's just, you know, would be a lot harder to deal with. Like, yeah. As like a prop goes. It's, it, I mean, because it was a full, it was a plastic costume. It wasn't. So I'm thinking it's a space suit. I think she's going into space because can she breathe in space? I mean, she has, but at the same time, she doesn't. Like, no one can breathe in space. Yeah, so maybe she has to fight in space and she's going to be a- out there longer than she can breathe? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Um, other than that, though, there was also the Flash trailer. Flash trailer looks interesting. Um, the next season looks pretty exciting. Looks interesting, but frustrates me. Um, I wish they wouldn't have revealed the ring in the trailer. Yeah. Cause th- so, uh, the Flash's suit is hidden in a ring. Okay. So, he, he there's some, like special superhero technology he has that actually compresses his suit into his ring and so that's how he always has his suit with him and he's super fast so he pops it out puts it on before anyone even notices um they've never done that in the show like they they alluded to it i think with um one of the villains like one of the um flash speedster villains i believe thawne had it yeah i could i I figured it was i believe it was reverse flash and maybe um what's his name from the last season not the not not the thinker the one before it Oh, Evil Barry? I think Evil Barry might have had something or mentioned something. No, because he just had the big fucking... Yeah, he had the uh, Savitars. Yeah, there you go. Uh, But I think that would have been a way cooler reveal for, like, the first episode of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, he gets the ring and fucking, like... But see, that's the thing. That is the first episode. I know. Because he he has a busted up suit right now. Yeah, no, no, no. I... I, I know it's the first episode, but I think that would have just been a cooler reveal for the show. Like, yeah. save that sort of cool thing for the actual series. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I believe it's one of those six in one half dozen in the other type of thing. Like, some pe- for me, I don't really care too much. I think it was cool to show it there. Um, but if they showed it to me in the show and not in the trailer, I, I would have been like, oh, that's amazing. I just been like, all right, yeah, cool. They have, they brought it in. Yeah, I just, it's one of those, like, yeah. It was such a throwaway thing in the trailer. Yeah. Like, it happened over the course of three seconds. They didn't show him actually use the ring. Yeah. That, like, save that for the actual show. Like, it's if you're kind... not going to do anything with it, save it for the show. Yeah, it's, and it's the kind of shit that is why trailers are bad. But, like, this wasn't really even a trailer. It was a highlight reel with, like, a peek at the, the new sure. season. Because, like, most of it was a recap of the last season. Um, there was also Arrow Season 7... Which actually that that one was good. I like that. This one. looks very intense. Like, this season, like he's not gonna just get out of jail in the first episode. This is going to be an intense season where hopefully he's in jail for a while. And I, he'll probably be like, in jail for at least four or five episodes. Hopefully, he'll be out by the time the 
Thanksgiving special happens. Yeah, and everything's starting late. It's starting, like, mid-October. Yeah, I think Arrow started the latest. Um, yeah. Flash and Black Lightning, I think, were, like, October 9th. Yeah. But that's around when most of these start. They mostly start in October. I thought it was usually September. Nope, all the CW stuff's usually October. Okay. Um, but yeah, that Arrow trailer actually looked really cool. Yeah, it did. I, I was, uh, pretty excited for it. It looked dark the way the first season was. Yeah. Which is definitely a good thing. Um, there was also Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, and that, that really gave us the least out of all of them. It was fun, though, which is really yeah. what that show is. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bummed that, uh, I mean, it's a, it's another news item, but um, they confirmed that uh, Arthur Darville won't be back this season playing Rip Hunter. I mean, he's, I guess, he's dead, dead. I mean, it's a time travel show. They've had characters that are dead, dead come back before. Yeah, but Arthur Darville being a time bureau, whatever, he's, he's going to, or Rip Hunter being a time bureau guy, he's going to be like, you can't do this. You just, you can't. It was always the villains that brought them back and then sent them back to their original time. It was never the heroes. No, I mean, you're you're not wrong, but still. So, like, if they bring Rip Hunter in, it'll be, like, for an episode because he'll be like, if there's a reason I'm not with you, I'm not allowed to know. So stay away. And um, the, one of the producers actually acknowledged, like, there was no body. We did not see him dead. And it's a time travel show, so anything's possible. Like, they basically, like, like he, he all but confirmed that the character will be back again, just not this season. Um, maybe, yeah. But maybe it's just they can't have more than one British guy on at a time since Constantine's a regular <laughs> member. Yeah, I mean, that's a possibility. Um, But yeah, there was nothing particularly special about that one. No, it's, it, honestly, I think it was, like, of all the trailers, it had the most of last season in it. And just a smattering of this season. You didn't watch the Black Lightning trailer, which was five minutes of last season. Well, <laughs> I mean, I also haven't watched Black Lightning, so I wouldn't have recognized that at all. Yeah, no, the, the entire thing was basically just a recap, a five-minute recap of the first season. Okay. Which, like, the show was good, but... Yeah. But yeah, there was nothing particularly good about, like, what they showed. Um, speaking of nothing good, there was also the Titans trailer with the DC Universe online thing. That's about all we need to say about that. Um, yeah, that show looks like absolute garbage. Oh my, it looks so, like, like, Robin is straight up murdering people. He's murdering people, he said fuck Batman for no real like, reason after he murdered or, a bunch of people. No, he's not Robin, he's Nightwing, but he's no, straight No, he's up, Robin. Is he Robin? I thought they were, I thought he was gonna be Nightwing. No, I'm pretty sure that when they, sh he might be Nightwing in the show when it, like, in the show proper, but he was dressed as Robin in okay. that, unless I'm fucking really mistaken. I can't remember, but... I'm just like, he's straight up murdered somebody. Like, you see him, you haven't watched it, right, Jordan? Nope. He friggin' grabs whatever his Robin Batarang thing that he has and stabs a dude through the neck and just blood splatters everywhere. Like, it is the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen happen in a Batman oriented thing where Batman is like, you don't kill. And now, friggin' Robin's the Red Hood, killing everybody. This isn't Jason Todd, this is Dick Grayson. He's not supposed to be killing people. And even then, Dick Grayson, or Jason Todd didn't really kill people until he was resurrected yeah, as the Red Hood. And he killed drug dealers. He killed bad people. He wouldn't kill just a thug. I don't think, at least. Uh, I mean, debatable. But, like, I, I mean, and honestly, like, Dick Grayson wasn't the only character they got wrong. Like, no. Oh, friggin' starfire how she was just shooting a flamethrower out of her hand is she supposed to throw like bolts and blasts right not supposed to be just no, flames she can, she can just shoot flames mm, that's just... but i mean starfire was the least of my concern like so that they, they didn't do a good job making her look like starfire no um but like raven was the worst like she was just like this sad little emo girl oh yeah and it looks like they're trying to build up a relationship between raven and robin but like raven's totally at least 10 years younger than robin like, teenage years, and Robin has to be mid-twenties. Yeah. Like, it's so weird and awkward. And no, you're not supposed to have Robin and Raven. It's supposed to be Beast Boy and Raven. Boom. Nobody else. It's Beast Boy and Raven, always. That's the only ship you have in Titans. I'm pretty sure that's not true, but okay. No, it's, it's always supposed to be Beast Boy and Raven. Then that was only in the cartoon. Yeah, but still, that's the only thing that matters. It's DC. The only thing that matters about DC are their cartoons and their animated series. Um... But yeah, like that that whole thing just looks bad and 
it's seventy five dollars a year or like eight dollars a month or something like that. Which that's not too bad. It's still it's another eight dollars a month for content that is not looking promising. Yeah, and that's the issue is like what what content besides Titans are they gonna have on there? Um, so they're gonna have movies. So like I think like they they've been showing like Batman Returns. Looks like that's gonna be on there. Okay. Um, so like some of the movies, sure, that's cool, but I don't ne necessarily need to pay seventy five dollars a year to watch movies. No, nope. like I can pay the one month fee, watch the movie, and then never pay it again. Yeah. Um, and then th there's they announced like five or six shows. Um, Young Justice is getting like a new season on there, which was an animated show. There's gonna be like an adult oriented cartoon, like something that would be on Adult Swim. Okay. Um, that's gonna be like a Harley Quinn thing. There's a Swamp Thing show in the works. Um, I think they, they revealed there's going to be a Stargirl show at some point. Okay. So, like, they have a bunch of stuff in the works, but if Titans is sort of, like, the mold that they're working from, this doesn't look promising. No, mm -hmm. not at all. You know what, though? That is all... That is not all of the trailers. But, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. All right, and we're back. We're back. Uh, a couple more trailers. Yeah, a few more. So uh, there was a Doctor Who trailer. Yeah, I did see that one. It's Doctor Who. Yeah, the, it, it it just kind of showed flashes of the people that are going to be in the show with a little voiceover. Yeah, and and some of how she's going to be acting as the Doctor. Voiceover makes it seem like she she's like new to every like everywhere you're going is completely new world. Which like, will be neat because it, it is a new showrunner too. So yeah. They probably aren't going to have any of those. They don't really have anything to call back to that's their own, so they probably won't be really calling back to anything. Yeah. It um, would be nice to see a face of Bo again, but... <laughs> I'm, I am looking forward to seeing how 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 she does in the role. Yeah. Just because we went from Matt Smith, who, played a, who, who did a very good job of playing a young... an old man in a young man's body. Yeah. To an old man in an old man's body. <laughs> yeah. And now we have... Like, a young woman playing this role that has been a man for yeah. 60 and some she odd, is now playing an years. old man in a fairly young woman's body. Like, yeah. It's going to be so awkward. It's going to be hilarious. You going to start watching, Drew? Probably not. I, it, you know what? This might be a good season to pick up if it, you... like. Look, it's just like wrestling. Uh-huh. Um, if you gave me, like, t like, a little while to really sit down and, like, formulate <laughs> this, I could do it. How many men are half naked? You'd be surprised, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you, um, go, if you go back to season two, um, Captain Jack Harkness is naked quite a bit. Oh yeah, I, on the, television, no with less. With the exception of last season, there it's probably there are probably a lot of half naked men throughout the series. Mm, right up my alley. I, exactly, <laughs> and like people in funny costumes. Okay. Um. Big over the top speeches. Okay. Yeah, like it's very wrestling. It. I mean. So it's anime. All right. Yeah. So you know how I gave Drew in the homework of watching Unbreakable and Split over the week. Your homework is to figure out the connection between how you can say Doctor Who is just like wrestling. So for next week, that's your assignment. I'll think about it. Okay. Don't mean doesn't mean I'll do it, but I'll consider. I, I, it. Know, I know. I know. Um, no one's gonna do their homework. So let's oh. see. Yeah, Doctor Who. There was a River Riverdale trailer, which was a lot of recap, but it did show yeah. some new stuff. Um, I know this new season is going to take place like at the end of summer. It's like Labor Day is when it picks up. Okay. Um, I don't want to say anything because I know you've That's, never watched has it. Has that series always taken place in a short amount of time? Um, it seems like it for the most part. I think the first two seasons were over the course of this one school year. Okay. Um, it's a good show though. Like I, I do a good show watch in a, in a very campy, over the top sort of way. Yeah. But I think you'd enjoy it. I, I do want to watch it. I'll get into it eventually. Uh, oh, you know what? There there was one other trailer that I just don't have on this list. Uh, there was an Iron Fist trailer for season two. Yeah. Um, it, He fights some guys in an alley and then punches the ground, and that's about it. Yeah, it's it's very much a teaser trailer, but it mentions how... It talks about um, Matt Murdock missing and whatnot, I think. I can't fully remember. There was a little voiceover, and I, I really don't remember it. Yeah, no. But uh, it is coming out the same day as Spider-Man on PS4. Yeah. Which... And speaking of Spider-Man on PS4, there was a Spider-Man story trailer released at Comic-Con. Yeah, I wasn't really counting that here, um, which I guess I should have because I didn't talk about it in the video game section. I mean, it's part of trailers. 
I mean, it, it was a trailer for a video game, so like we saw some story based video yeah. game stuff. Like S- Silver Sable's going to be in it. Yeah, um, and uh, they're they're pretty much outlawing Spider Man. Like he's a full on vigilante and not just a hero. I mean that that like, happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, but it looks looks interesting. Miles Morales plays a big role in it. It seems. Yeah, yeah, that one I was surprised about. I didn't realize he was going to be as prominent. Yeah. And I know they did, they did re- just recently announce that it's Laura Bailey doing the voice for Mary Jane. Yes. Um, and I did find out that it's um, it was Christos Gage is the one who's writing it, who he's a comic book writer. He co-wrote a lot of um, The Last Tent. Not, well, he co-wrote a lot of Dan Slott's run with him. Like, yeah. Anytime okay. there was like an event or something like that, um, he was usually involved in it in one way or another. And he is actually writing the upcoming Spider Geddon event that's happening. Okay. I think it starts next month, actually. And then uh, one of the characters in that that series is actually going to be the PS4 Spider Man. Okay. Because yeah. it's it's like the Spider Verse thing they did a few years ago, where it's just a bunch of spider powered people from different universes. Okay. Yeah. So like it, the cool thing they did in that book was introduce just a bunch of just absolute over the top versions of Spider Man, like. There was Spider Punk, where he looked like an 80s punk guy with, like, the cut-off denim jacket and, like, the fucking Liberty Spike hair nice. and everything. Oh, jeez. Um, but in one of the issues, they also made reference to <laughs> two spider <laughs> guys... Bless you. Um, two Spider-Men that looked like... <laughs> now you're all right. That looked like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. But this is, good. This is like, a sequel to that. Okay. So they're going to have a bunch of spider people from different worlds... And one of them is going to be this PS4 version. Which is cool. It's them just showing, like, yeah, this is another alternate universe. Yeah, I mean, don't know how Which, much of it he's going to be in it. It might just be, like, a quick, like, oh, look, there's the, the white spider. like. Which makes me think, I wonder if there's going to be any other heroes. For getting the Sinister Six villains, do you think there's going to be any other heroes? I mean, in the game, I mean, there could be. I mean, yeah. technically, Silver Sable's not a villain. Well, yeah, I mean, she's she's a mer- I, ca- I call her a mercenary. No, I mean that's exactly what she is. Okay, I don't really know much about. But Silver she Tail, she so. kind of walks on both sides. Like there are times where she's against Spider Man. There are times where she works with him. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, there's no reason that there couldn't be cameos from other heroes. Um, it would all just depend on what Disney wanted to allow them to do. Yeah, or Marvel. I don't know really who has the creative control over it. Yeah. Um, but I doubt it's not like they'll be playable. There might just be like story based cameos. Or yeah. you'll just get their costumes as unlockables. Well, I mean, there's going to be a bunch of different Spider-Man costumes, but I think you were talking more about, like, Iron Man or Captain America yeah, showing yeah, up, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, like, I could see there being, like... Almost, mm, hmm. Maybe not Captain America and Iron Man, but maybe, like, some of the other street-level heroes. Um, like a Luke Cage, Iron Fist type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th- it all depends on what they're doing with this universe. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for that game. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? We talked about that. Uh, St- Star Wars is bringing back the Clone Wars animated series for a new season. I did see that. That ended in, I think, 2014 before. Wow. Yeah. Right. And this looks to be picking... So this looks like it's picking up right before episode three. Okay. Um, Would make sense. Like, yeah, like this is right before the... the the movie starts at least that's from that's what i read like after watching the trailer like i read like kind of what it was talking about and i guess some i guess this is leading to like a battle that happened or something like that but people expect that this season is going to just butt up right against episode three beginning and it will be like a natural conclusion for the actual series whereas when it ended before i guess it wasn't as good of an ending so at least this is going to basically completely tie together from the Clone Wars movie to Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Um, which is cool. Yeah. I know people really liked that cartoon, and I think it's it was one of the few pieces it, of it the few pieces of content outside of the movies that actually got kept in the canon after Lucasfilm took over. Yeah, both, or Disney took over. Both the cartoon and the CG one were both like highly regarded. I remember the CG one that took that literally came out in like those little like micro series, like the little five minute chunks went like around the time that the Clone Wars film happened. That's the cartoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, the cartoon yeah. had it was like a 
quick mini series, fifteen minute episodes, and I think there was like six of them. I think they were even shorter than that. And th- maybe, and then they had like the CG version, the CG stuff afterwards, which yeah, it bridged the gap between the two. I I think that even had like Darth Maul, like version six in it, or, or however they do Darth Maul, where he Probably. comes back to life like four times. I know Rebels had Darth Maul in it. Yeah. And I believe Rebels is still going. I think Rebels actually just ended, or its final season is happening. Yeah, I, I know it is not going to be on for long if it's not already over. Yeah, but like I, I for for whatever reason, I never got into any of the Star Wars cartoons. Yeah, I I, ne- I haven't watched them, but like any time I've seen them, I was always interested in them. Yeah. Um. It looks like uh the X Men might have a chance at joining the MCU after all. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Comcast is giving up bidding on the Fox properties. Finally. So, I mean, I think now it's just that that lawsuit issue that got brought up against them is probably the only thing really blocking it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Comcast, um, Comcast did say that it, uh, it does not intend to pursue the further acquisition of 21st Century Fox assets and instead will focus on a recommended offer for Sky. Which is another television broadcast thing. In the UK. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure what that was. Uh, it's Rupert Murdoch's UK-based television okay. program. It's not or, the BBC. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, let's see. They have a lot of sports. <laughs> which is why Disney would be interested. Or Comcast would be yeah. interested. So My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's coming to the US. Yeah. Um... And it's actually going to come over dubbed and subbed. Yeah, I mean, it, that seems like the general pace of things lately, is they're doing them both at the same time. But it's coming in September. Uh, I believe it gets released in August in Japan, so it's that's on- not too much of a gap. You know what, though? For for movies, it it's actually kind of cool that it's coming so soon. Yeah. Like, so a lot of, like, those movies don't often, like, release that quickly, but it just goes to show how popular the show is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it... It's going to be one of those, like, it's obviously not going to be on every theater. Like, it's not going to be, like, a huge wired release the way, like, the first three Pokemon movies were yeah, back it's in the gonna, late 90s, early 2000s. It's probably going to be, like, a Fathom Events type of thing. Probably. It's, it's planned for 400 city, four hundred plus cities. Okay. Um, Starting on September 26th. Uh, Well, I, I'm sorry. On September 26th and October 2nd, you can watch it in Japanese with subtitles. Okay. It, you can then watch it on the 25th, 27th, and 29th of September dubbed okay which i will certain as soon as like the actual like tickets are available i will probably buy one for one of those three days where it's dubbed yeah i uh i might i might try to go see it i'm not sure i might i'm not i don't know what i'm gonna do yet why not what else do yeah you have to do? i mean but it's technically non-canon because it's a movie so the movies generally aren't canon but it's still it's my hero academia you know what, though? so it's like this one like, entirely could be it takes place prior to season three yeah, I mean, who who knows what could happen? Yeah, like the, the like, well, because the movie was debuted at Anime Expo. Yeah, like people already saw it. Yeah, and like it got like decent reviews. Like it, it was the same thing that like a- anime movies usually get. Like it's got a strong opening, it's got a cool ending. The middle kind of lags a little bit. Yeah, but they and- placed it in a spot where it doesn't have to not be canon. Yeah. Like it's not like a Dragon Ball Z movie where like the movies are literally happening while happening while they're supposed to be fighting other monsters. Well, I mean, and that was always my thing. Like with uh, the Naruto movies, like they would make them so that like they were kind of in a spot that where it could like just because they're releasing it during this time of release with the anime, it it's not during that time during the anime. It's like in the future or at this point or that point or whatever. Yeah, like um, yeah, but I- it's like they do things that you never see again in the anime. So it's like, like in one of the Naruto movies, he uses the Rasengan and taps into seven different types of chakra and uses a rainbow Rasengan. And I'm like, what? But that never comes into play ever again. Like, yeah, because- it's just movie lore. That's all it is. Yeah, so exactly. I'm sitting here like, do I want to get excited about something where... All this shit could happen that could be awesome, and we could probably see United States of Smash again, but I'm never going to get to see it again after that. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, you could potentially see it, because this movie is happening in the summer break, like, before they go to camp, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, you figure, like, season three started with them going to that camp. Yeah. 
um, the movie is taking place sometime between the end of exams and before the camp starts, where All Might is taking Midoriya to this island facility where they um where they do all of the research and um customizations for like superhero gear. Like that's where like their suits and all come from. Yeah. And somehow like the rest of the class ends up there too. Yeah. But you like get to s- it I guess you get to see All Might in America when he's younger, like on like a trip overseas or something like that, which is probably where he lo- like gets his love for America from. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um it has like an old friend of his in there. Like stuff yeah, like that. Like, so like, I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm just saying uh, I'll probably see it. I just don't know when or how. Like, I'll definitely well see, see it in the it, theater. Yeah, it, at like, this point, it, I mean, it depends on where I am money wise in September. It's like ten fucking dollars. I dude. know that could be a lot of money. Sometimes it won't be. You go see it. Treat yourself. I'll try. I want to treat myself with other stuff. It's my thirtieth birthday in a week and a half. And this this is two months away. I know. You can put a dollar away every week, and you'll be able to afford a movie ticket. Mm, not really. Maybe. Okay, put two dollars away every week, and you can there afford you a movie go. ticket. There you go. I'm sure you can. You can. You can pull that off. I'm sure. I know. I'm. I'm I'll probably see. Drew's gonna go see it. Yep. He doesn't even know what's going on right now. Nope. No, I do. I've been looking to see if they had a list of the theaters that it's going to be at. It'll. It'll let probably. You guys know. It'll probably be at Cinemark. Yeah, Cinemark always has that stuff. If not Cinemark, then one of like the the Regals in Philly or something like that. Yeah. Um, Joss Whedon is working on rebooting Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the TV. That's pretty sweet. It does not have a network yet, but I know Fox was real interested in doing something with him. Oh, great! So they'll have they'll they'll re they'll air it terribly like they always do with his stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, it just goes to Netflix. That would be pretty cool. And I know the thing people aren't so a lot of like the original like production staff seems to be involved like producers and things like that. Okay. Um. Nobody's really sure if this is like a reboot or a continuation or anything that like that though. Um. It's being said that it's going to be it's going to be an African American girl playing the the Slayer. Okay. I, and it actually says that she's going to be playing Buffy. Okay. So whether that is just them trying to dumb it down, so like people like get like she is going to be like the main character or if it's actually like a full reboot like they're doing with charmed I, I i don't i don't see it not i see it being a full reboot i don't see it like i don't see any reason for them to just continue the series what was it 15 years later so th- the only thing that you'd have with that is that show ended where they basically had an army of slayers yeah um so 15 years later having a new like prominent slayer picking up could be actually really interesting, especially they continued a lot, and Joss Whedon worked on some of it, they continued a lot of it in comics. Yeah, yeah. Um, And, like, not that you have to use those stories, but knowing that, like, that sort of universe continued so far, having something in television continue it also Mm -hmm. would be nice, rather than just like, oh yeah, no, we're just starting fresh, brand new. Because at that point, that's the third iteration of Buffy. Yeah, I know. And none of them has been as good as the 1992 movie. (laughs) Uh, I don't think I've ever watched a 92 movie. Oh, it's great. It's got Christy Swanson, Luke Perry, Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I've never watched it. Oh, it's great. I think we were going to watch it once, but never did. Like, like it's we great. had it and we put it's it It's great in, in a bad way. Did you ever watch Buffy, like the TV yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, I loved Buffy. So, it's the polar opposite of that. Whereas, like, Buffy was kind of, like, dark and gritty and, like, it had its its light moments, but for the most part, it was a drama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Buffy the movie was a comedy. Yeah. And Joss Whedon was not happy about that. He did not write it to be a comedy. No. No, that's why he then did a TV show where he got to do his actual vision for it. Yeah. Um, DC finally gave a name to their cinematic universe. It's Worlds of DC. It's Dome of Dumb Dumb. That too. Yeah, it's... it's. I'm not going to call it the WODC. No. Call it the DCEU. Yeah, because, like, th- there's not even a good way to say that word. W-O-D-C. WODC? WODC. Yeah, it's stupid. I mean, but it would be capital W, lower case O, and then D C. So it would be it. W- people are gonna call it the W D C, and and then, uh, and then I'm just gonna turn around and be like, yeah. So you're gonna call it the W D C, but but D C W versus or D C yeah D C W versus isn't isn't a thing. Come on now. No, it's not. It should be. No, it shouldn't. It totally makes sense. It doesn't. It's the arrow. No, no it should be the D C W verse. 
Oh, shit. I just realized we never went back and talked about that Brawly tra- trailer. I know. I was waiting for you to notice that. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. The, the World of DC is a stupid name. It is. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, the movie Brawly had a trailer, though. And it actually looked kind of cool. Yeah. Goku yeah. and Vegeta are wearing weird coats. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're pushing really, really hard that nobody knows who Brawly is. Oh, no. Yeah, nobody knows who Brawly is in this universe. Yeah, because nope. this is... It, it, Brawly never happened. This yeah. is the first canonical appearance of Brawly. Yeah, so that they're doing a different thing with the movies now where the movies are actually canon. That's mm-hmm. why, like, and I hope they don't do this with whatever the new series ends up being. Because with Super, they just stretched the first, like, 20-ish episodes into the two movies. So, like, the first arc of the show was Battle of the Gods, and the second arc was Resurrection F. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm hoping they don't do that again, and this movie gets to just stand alone as, like, this piece in the middle but uh yeah i mean i think that works because like i was super down on it just being another broly movie mm-hmm. at this point like the fuck can broly do against goku and vegeta they're literally gods now like they have the same energy as the fucking gods mm-hmm. um but in this like different character um it looks like he doesn't he's kicking both their asses without even going super saiyan yeah so he is some sort of monster he's he's probably a god as well well so he is probably the kale of their universe. Because um, in the, the universe survival thing, one of the other universes, one of the Saiyans, basically is their legendary Super Saiyan. Like, yeah. when she transforms, it's like this to- different thing. Her eyes go totally white, and she gets super big and bulky, the way Broly always did. Yeah. So, and she was as, like, she was able to keep up with Goku at, like, his current level. Yeah. So, like, it makes sense that, like, their Earth-7 version of that, like, would exist. Mm-hmm. And apparently it's Broly. And yeah. I'm sure, and it looks like he's going to fight Frieza at some point. Yeah. So, like, Frieza's still around, and he's going to become Gold Frieza and probably get his ass kicked by Broly. And I'm sure Goku will find some new fun form to do that will... <laughs> Frieza's going to yep. die again, and... Which, I mean, killing Frieza, it's always fun. Well, Frieza was, like, on the team to, like, save the universe in the last one. Yeah. Like, in the the universe survival stuff. Which doesn't make sense, because he's dead. But, okay. I guess they they brought him back to help, because they needed somebody else strong, and the last time they did somebody strong, they got Boo, and the motherfucker fell asleep taking the test. Yeah. But, I mean, what about, like, the rest of the X or Z fighters? Like... What, Yamcha? Gohan? Gohan... I mean, honestly, if Gohan didn't have Super Saiyan, Yamcha would be tougher than him. Gohan can hold his own against Goku without going Super Saiyan. They didn't they do by that the fu- end of the universe survival stuff. He could during it, he couldn't. He didn't start training again until just before that. Yeah, but that's the th- like he could have. He's good enough. He's a good fighter. No, that's the reason that they didn't bring him to the 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 last tournament. Like Goku, like he actually got upset that Goku didn't ask him, and he's like, "Dude, you haven't." You, you, this is your first training session in a decade. Like you're not, you're not gonna beat these guys. I think he could have held his own. Nope, not a chance. He like he, they made Gohan super pathetic and super. And that sucks because Gohan's the best. Yeah, like he is. Like Great Saiyan Man was dumb, but like in kind of like a goofy, fun way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because Gohan was still super powerful, and like he could hold his own when he got into a fight. But yeah, but at this point, like. You figure, like, he didn't really train that whole time between, like, the Cell games and the Boo Saga. Like, he trained for, like, a week before the tournament. But, like, he was still young, and, like, he knew what he was doing and all. Yeah. And then, like, he got that power up during the Boo Saga from the the old Kai, but then from, like, that point on, he did nothing. Like, it's years later, and he hasn't trained at all. He didn't even know where his cl- where his fighting clothes were in the movie, or in the, the series. Yeah, I do remember that. But yeah, I, I know by the time like the universal survival stuff comes up, he has been training with Piccolo again, and he is able to like at least hold his own with Goku. But like, if Goku went all out, he would get his ass kicked. Which means like the people that they were fighting would have fucking wrecked him too. Though I think he is on the universal survival team, like because it's a huge team. I think there's like twelve of them. Yeah. Um. So the last like entertainment thing I have is all the James Gunn stuff. Cause that's fucking insane. It's it's so stupid. I hate it so much. I think the craziest thing is the person who dug all this stuff up and like started the witch hunt. Somebody dug up one of their tweets of that person basically t- saying rape isn't real. 
Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that person also a piece of shit. Yeah. Like like the stuff James Gunn said, not good, not funny, super shitty. Yeah. But like yep. Unless unless somebody has some inkling that he was actually committing any of the stuff he was like just spouting out off on Twitter, like people grow up, their sense of humor changes. Yeah, it's it's a decade ago. It's fuck, yeah, it's fucking ten years ago. Who like? Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Unless he was actually doing the shit that he was saying, it doesn't like why why go through these links now? Like Dan Harmon isn't some shit right now because. I think it was 2009, he made a skit for a pilot where he was going back in time and stopping, and it was like a parody of Dexter, where he was trying to, like, like do the whole killing serial killers type of thing, but instead of killing serial killers, he would go back in time and rape them as they were babies. That's fucked. That is <laughs> fucked. Dan Harmon made this. Somebody dug it up recently. You know what Adult Swim is doing, though? Oh, we're distancing ourselves from this whole thing. We have nothing to do with it. But they're not firing him. And he even well, said, he even said, because after he put it up and maybe like a, a short while after he posted it, he took it down. He was like, this was terrible. It was a shitty thing. It's horrible. And I apologize to anybody. I offended it was supposed to be funny and it wasn't. But it's, again, it was also it's friggin' nine years ago, ten years ago. Like, people so, change. Like, but people also some slight differences. Dan Harmon does not work for a for Adult Swim, like I mean, yeah, but he, they could not. They, they could. He doesn't work for Adult Swim, but he writes and creates Rick and Morty, which Adult Swim could be like airs. Which, and they, you know, who knows what the next season of Rick and Morty when it'll even happen if it'll be on Cartoon Network. I mean, Justin Rowland. I mean, they have seventy-five episodes scheduled for Rick and Morty. Yeah, and so that doesn't mean they have to show up on Cartoon Network. I thought it was Cartoon Network that signed them for 75 episodes. They did, but so Cartoon they Network's could also... owned by another company that could move it to another network. Okay. Uh, or they could throw away that contract and be like, we don't want to associate with you. Yeah, which then means they'd be firing Dan Harmon. No. Because they're, he, he, unless he was able to sign with somebody else to release Rick and Morty, which, I mean, that show is so big that people will definitely keep watching it, but it's like... Adult Swim is just distancing themselves instead of straight up saying we're not touching any of the shit he does anymore because of this. It's like like James Gunn, his shit, yeah, it was terrible jokes. They weren't even jokes. They were just stupid shit to say. It was somebody to, It was somebody trying to get a rise out of people by being as offensive as they could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think even before this whole shit, he's come out and said, like, yeah, that, none of that was good. And no, yeah, apparently I, he apologized for all this stuff in, like, 2012. Yeah. No, no. He apologized for something else shitty he did in 2012. Okay. He never apologized for these tweets before. Which, I mean, like, but, why would he? Why would he go back and be like, hey, I made a bunch of tweets in 2009. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, but what did he do in 2012? I, right? I forgive, but I, when someone on a post mentioned that I was doing Googling and it was a, a different thing, he got... Oh, no, it was about... Um, it, it was something to do with comic book characters in 2012 that he apologized for it was like sexist comments about female comic book characters was the thing in 2012 he apologized for not these tweets okay i have to look it up exactly but it, it, was, it was something comic book related like right around when super came out okay yeah because like somebody brought up to me they're like you know 10 years ago the world was a different place and these things wouldn't have been as offensive so that's why no one brought them up back then I'm like I looked at them and was like, no, have you read these tweets? Ten years ago, these were still stupid, terribly offensive tweets. It's just the fact that it's ten years ago. Like, no, he Here's the difference. Twitter wasn't as big of a thing ten years ago. Well, Twitter wasn't as big of a thing, and he wasn't as big of a name yeah. either. Yeah, but I, I just, I like, I still stand by the fact that even though it wasn't as big of a thing, it was still said, and you could still have always found it over the uh -huh. past ten years. Sure. You hired him knowing quotes knowing that he said these things they were out there whether or not they knew about them is a different question it's i don't think you can i don't think it's a right to turn around and fire somebody over something they said 10 years ago <laughs> said and did are two different things though if they did something wrong so... like what he like if he did what he actually said in these tweets then yeah no that's just wrong if he said this shit 
and it was just supposed to be like one of those like over the top jokes that no one thought was funny. It's like it's ten years ago. So I'll throw this hypothetical out there. He said the Nazis did nothing wrong. Fuck the Jews. Never apologized for it. Someone found that tweet. What do you do? How long ago was it? 2008. Same time. I mean, honestly, like, unless there's other proof that he is, like, a secret Nazi, like, I don't think he should be... I don't think he should have been fired. I think he should have been suspended from working on the movie until Disney could look into it and see... So you halt production on the movie... That's not even in production yet. And... Like, like the movie's uh, not like there's no movie in production. Yeah, to the movie's not going to be in production until twenty till late next year because it doesn't come out till twenty twenty, right? Yeah. So like at this point, like you, you you take him off of it for a couple of months. You investigate it to see if he is as shitty of a person as he portrayed ten years ago. And if everything comes it's, back clean, like let the guy fucking make the movies that have been making you money. It's it's honestly it's the same thing with what's going on with Hardwick as well. Hardwick, he's still being investigated. He has not been fired. They have well, taken him off air, but he's not been fired. He's been fired they're, from some stuff. He's yeah. been fired from some stuff, but they're inve- a lot of places are investigating this still and seeing if he actually is as shitty as a person as Chloe Dykstra said he was. And like. Disney, not exactly the most reputable past either. Sure. And I mean, like, those were far longer ago than just yeah. 10 years. Yeah. But, like, still, like, things change. People change. Yeah. I, like, the- it's one... If this was Kevin Spacey and he had been raping boys in the 80s, then, yeah, that's a totally different situation. Fucking fire that guy and fucking lock him up someplace. He's a degenerate scumbag. But, like... Having a shitty sense of humor and trying to get rises out of people is what the internet is. Like that is just the entire in- internet. Um, cause, and the the pe- like the like I f- I forget if we if I said it while we were recording or if this was something I said when we talked about it before. But like the guy that um found it said that like rape isn't rape. Yeah, no, yeah, you yeah, just yeah, said you that. Just okay, said I that a little bit ago. look, I can't even remember. It's been a long day. Um, and apparently like these this same group of people. Like, they also are trying to, like, stir up shit for Trevor Noah for something he said, like, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently, like, there's literally, like, a list of people that they're going after on, like, 4chan. Well, I know. It's hard right-wing conservatives. Yeah. The the people going after Trevor Noah are because he's... Because he's black. uh, No, it's because he's saying that France, or that Africa won the World Cup, even though it was France, because a majority of France's team is African. (laughs) It's also because he's a black liberal. <laughs> that but, too. Like, it's just, it's just, it's so nuts that he got fired over this. Like, I'm just like, like I had something else I wanted to say on 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 it, but I can't, I can't remember what it was. I'm just, I'm so, I'm mad at it. I'm mad at it. I mean, a I lot. Just, of- why? Oh, it, it's, well, it like, I, I, he's a good director. The movies were good. Like, I hope they can stay to the level as they were, but. Like, the only reasonable explanation I can get as to why Disney fired him is because of this whole attempted acquisition of getting the X-Men stuff and the Fox stuff. They're trying to be like, hey, look, we're the good guys. We're getting rid of somebody who did something bad 10 years ago. That literally has nothing to do with the acquisition. The acquisition is all money. Like, well, they trying trying to keep out of the controversial limelight to give... Because there's stock options involved, that's actually not an incredibly yeah. Yeah, naive true. point to take. Like, if their stock tanked, their offer was yeah. now, you know, some amount lower to where Comcast could have been like, well, we just offered you this much in cash. Yeah. Outright. But, you know, at the same time, it's Disney. They just have to release, like, a new trailer for, like, Infinity War Part 2. And there you go. Their stock goes back up. Yeah. Um... I know a lot of the cast has like spoken out and like like on the side of yeah. Gun. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Batista was the most vocal about it. I think the only one who hasn't and his brother s- Sean Gunn. Yeah, I think the only one who hasn't really said anything for or against was uh, what's her name? Um, Gamora. Oh, uh, Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. She was just like, I'm just gonna take a step back and just let things go. Like she's doing yeah. what people should do and just be like, we're distancing ourselves from that. We're not for or against it. We're just we're gonna distance ourselves from it and let it play its. Now, how you distance yourself from someone? You actively don't pay them money to work for you, like. But I mean, it's just that's like 
I, I, I don't agree with, like, distancing myself from, from somebody because I said something stupid is, like, I'm not commenting on this because it, it doesn't have anything to do with, this is all them. This is that so, person. So, like, like, but what you're not looking at is, like, Zoe Saldana can just actively not say anything because it literally has no effect on her. Like, it doesn't affect her job, like, acting in any movie. But if it affects, potentially affects Disney's, pro straight up affects their money. But if Zoe Saldana goes out in defense of James Gunn, and then there's people who are like, you worked with James Gunn, and you said he's a fantastic guy, but he said these terrible things, I'm not going to hire you. Yes. It's but the same thing. Like, so distancing yourself from them saying, I'm just... I'm going to stay away from this, but I'm still going but, to work with so, this guy. That's not her option, really. Like, Disney, Disney's option to say we're distancing him from him, and then if they were to keep paying him money, isn't and, good optics. And that's, like, that's why we said earlier, like, you don't fire the guy, you say we're going to put this under investigation and put you the know movie you can, on hold. So you fire him, investigate it, rehire him. I mean, I don't think he's getting actively paid unless he's working anyway. Uh, if there's, if the movie's coming out in two years, a script is being written. Yeah, like there's, he's I think he already wrote something. the script. He like has a contract. Yeah, but I'm saying like they need to terminate that con said contract. I don't know. I I just think like, it's shitty to fire somebody for words that were said a decade ago. Yeah, when nothing since then has been in that vein, like and like. When all this stuff came out, he did apologize for it. All right, he was sorry. Like he, he, there's, we can't go back in time and tell him not to say those words. You could delete the tweets when you get to the point where you're like insanely high profile. Okay. When have you're you, under the radar, have like, you have you ever thought about what you've tweeted ten years ago? T yes. Have really? You ever, like, uh, well. Yes, because I don't tweet that much. So well, no, but you get what I'm saying now. Like ten years ago, uh huh. Say you would you think right now I should delete that tweet that I tweeted ten years ago because it painted a like I would never think like oh I said I said that the 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 the, the Nazis were right ten years ago on Twitter. I should go delete that. No, I would never. Th it's something he said, and then he said it, and it was done. I no. don't remember half the shit I say on Facebook or Twitter tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know what the last thing I tweeted was. Yeah, but also like we're not. It it doesn't matter. Like, sure, it matters. No, it fucking incredibly matters. Are you kidding me? It it doesn't matter that we're not anybody. It's same with him. Like how often no, would no. he think? It, oh, I said this shit ten years ago. Okay. Okay. Calm down. I'm no, just I'm yeah. getting you're getting really worked like, up over something that we have no actual like, like horse in yes he probably he probably didn't stop to think about the things he said on twitter 10 years ago however as a high profile celebrity he really should go back and think about the things he said on twitter 10 years ago you have no like you have the right to say whatever the fuck you want you have no right for like to have someone stop from paying you because of dumb things you said 10 years ago. You know what, though? Like, that is not what the freedom of speech is. He has every right to say it. Disney has every right to not want to actively pay him money. No, and, and you're right. Like, that, that no, Disney did nothing wrong in firing him. I just think it's shitty. I mean, plus, like, I'm worried now that they're going to hire the guy that did Thor to do that to the next Guardians, and I don't want that to happen at all because all that guy did was a slapstick comedy. And, like... That was, like, Thor was entertaining, but I don't want, like, the second Guardians wasn't as bad as the second Thor, like, and it had a good balance of action and comedy. Like, I don't want a slapstick fucking comedy from that guy at all, ever again. Yeah, I just, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, there was a bunch of comic stuff that I know you guys don't give a single fuck about. Nope. So, I'm just gonna roll, run through them. Um, DC announced Heroes in Crisis, which is going to be, like, a new event thing that's going to primarily be Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, but it's also going to have Harley Quinn and Booster Gold as two of the main characters. I think um, is, was Booster Gold in the crossover event? Was he... 
for the DC ones? No. No, that was Ray. Something Ray. Yeah, Booster Gold has not been in anything okay. ever. I think I know who Booster Gold is. He's a time traveler. He's okay. goofy. Um, it's basically... DC is introduced in the concept that when heroes are hurt, there's like a rehabilitation center they go to that helps them both physically and emotionally. And somebody busts in there and starts shooting superheroes and kills people. Yeah. Um, Dan Didio, the publisher for DC, joked that you can't have a crisis without killing a Flash. So maybe one of the Flashes die. There's like four of them right now. Uh, he's, so He's not going to die. He's just going to run through time again. I don't know. Like the, They can kill him other ways. Like, Wally West was gone for a while, and he was just stuck in time. Yeah. Like, he wasn't running through it. Oh, the Flash. Um, so, that actually, that sounds more interesting than you than most of these events usually go. Oh, yeah. It sounds mm -hmm. a little bit more in line with um, Identity Crisis, which was another one from, like, the mid-2000s, where it was another kind of murder mystery. Um, one of the hero's wives was murdered. So, the whole, the whole thing was heroes trying to figure out what happened and who did it. Okay. And like that was soup that was super interesting. Um that's and that is going to start on September twenty sixth. So that actually comes out pretty soon. Yeah. Uh Grant Morrison is returning to DC to relaunch Green Lantern. Okay. Which I can't figure out for sure how this is going to work. So there's two Green Lantern books right now. There's Green Lanterns, which is two of the Earth Green Lanterns that are like their partners. They're you know, doing stuff in the sector of space that Earth is in. Yeah. And then there's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, which is all the other Green Lanterns. Okay. It's mostly Hal Jordan, but it's got all of the other Earth Green Lanterns other than the two that are actually, like, on Earth. Um, and then every other Green Lantern can potentially be in it. And it's kind of like this bigger scale book, just because it involves, like, the whole corp, so it's always all over the place with bigger threats and all. Um, I don't know if both of them are ending, and he is relaunching the whole thing as just one book about Hal Jordan, or if just one of them is ending and it's just going to be this one book. Um, but it's going to be a it's gonna it's gonna be a scaled back. Like it's still gonna be like Hal Jordan is a space cop. Like that's what the Green Lanterns are. Yeah. But it's not gonna be him dealing with these universe ending situations every four issues. It's gonna be much more of a like, this is what his life is. Okay. Which is actually kind of cool, and Grant Morrison's insane and writes really crazy comics, so... That's pretty good. Yeah, I like Grant Morrison. Uh, da, da, da. There's a new Shazam series coming. Jeff Johns is going to be writing it. He wrote it in the backup to Justice League when the New 52 started. Okay. So, like, that was the last time, like, Shazam was really involved in comics. Um, the first, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 issues of Justice League, probably 10, uh, 10 sounds like a good number, had a backup every issue of, like, it was, like, a five-page backup story that was the origin of Shazam in the New 52. Okay. Um, and then that character was part of Justice League of America for a little while while that book was happening, but, like, hasn't had his own series, hasn't really been involved in anything in a long time. And now that there's a movie coming out, they're launching a new book. So awesome. Nice. Yeah. Shazam's a weird character, and I don't know much about him, but, you know, a, a book probably won't be bad. Um, eh, that one wasn't really all that interesting. Just Batman's going to start wearing his underwear on the outside again, too. Yes. Like Everyone's going back to wearing their underwear on the outside. I Good. love inside-out underwear, Batman. Uh, Spider-Gwen is, in fact, becoming Ghost Spider. Yeah, they called her Ghost Spider in that trailer we talked about last week. Yeah, and then they, they confirmed that they're, they're launching a new series with her um, in the fall. Um, the, the, the current Spider-Gwen series that's been going for the last few years just ended. Okay. Um, and, like, it, it wrapped up well, and then they're going to shift to a new creative team after Spider-Geddon. And she is going to start going by Ghost Spider. Okay. Um, what did she go by during the... She was Spider-Woman of that universe. Okay. Um, by the end of the, the run, like in this last issue, people were actually just calling her Spider-Gwen, though. Because uh, her identity got outed, and she went to jail for a year. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like the, that book went some places. And she is in a world where, like, Tony Stark is an Iron Man. He basically owns, like, a chain of Starbuckses. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, like... The Earth that they created for that character is super weird, but, like, in all the right ways. Okay. Um, like, that's the one where Peter Parker actually became the lizard. Yeah. So, he he idolized Spider-Woman, not knowing that it was his friend Gwen. Yeah. And he wanted to be special, too, and turned himself into a lizard. Not, like, not for any nefarious reasons. Like, he actually wanted to be a hero. Yeah. But as a lizard, he was, like, wrecking things and hurting people, and... 
in the process of stopping him, Gwen ends up, ends up killing him. And, like, the whole beginning of the book is everyone thinks she's a murderer because she killed Peter Parker. Not knowing that Peter Parker was actually the lizard the whole time. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, so she's going to be Ghost Spider now. And they kind of set that up in the last issue. Okay. So. I like that name. That name seems cooler. Yeah, it's just a little weird. I mean. Like, I, not in a bad way. It's just one of those, like, she's gone from Spider Woman to Ghost Spider. Yeah, if they're going to bring her into, like, the normal universe where Gwen Stacy's already dead, it kind of makes sense. Well, she has been in the 616 universe a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, because the, they just jump between worlds now. And haven't they had Spider-Woman for a while before? There's a few Spider of them. Spider-Gwen. There's yeah. like three Spider-Girls, two spider women. Yeah, so. There, at one point, there were three Spider-Women, two Spider-Girls, and just always just one Spider-Man. But and the, each of the Spider Women had separate different had different kinds of powers than Spider Man, right? Like that was the one that like shot like acid out their hand or something like that. Um, yeah. So they 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 were all slightly different. Like Jessica Drew is the the like one that you normally think of when you think of Spider Woman. Yeah. And she's she does have some sort of like static, not static shock, but some sort of like not necessarily acid, but she did something that could hurt people. Yeah. Um, and then she can also she has like a pheromone thing that she can do. Yeah. Um, and then she has some of the normal spider powers, like walking on walls, but like her origin's weird. Like in one of her origins, she was actually a spider that got turned into a little girl or something. Okay. Yeah. Like comic books in like the seventies were fucking weird. Oh yeah. Gotta love the comic books. And (laughs) And then I think, I think her like current, like canon backstory is her parents were Hydra and experimented on her as a girl that gave her these powers. Now she's like a private eye because she said, fuck all this superhero nonsense. Okay. Kind of like um, Jessica Jones. Yeah, she's Jessica Jones. Um, Where was I? Uh, there's going to be... So Star Wars is actually doing something interesting with comics right now. They're doing what's called a maxi series. So it's... A miniseries would normally be like five, six, seven issues. Yeah. Maxi series is usually 12 or more. Okay. okay. Um, This one, it's going to be 30 issues altogether. Um, But it's going to... Ex- it's going to span the entire Star Wars like chronology, I guess you'd say. Like mm. it, it's gonna, there's gonna be prequel era story. Um, like I'm, I, fr- I forget how they. It, it's like prequel and then Clone Wars and then Resistance era. So it's gonna like go across like the whole gamut of yeah. timeline. Um, and it's gonna like jump back and forth. I guess like every issue is going to be like a one shot. Okay. Um, one of them is gonna be Darth Maul because that was the cover they showed off. Okay. Which, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, let's see. Diablo is getting a comic, the Blizzard game. So, that'll probably be the first comic Drew buys. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly probably will wind up at least looking into what they are about. Um, actually, let me open up the link real quick. Because it does, it does mention a little bit of, like, the synopsis for it. Okay. Because um, if it's just, like, a telling of the stories of 1 through 3, like... The story follows a group of zealous scholars and crusaders who discover humanity's shocking true origins. Huh. Yeah. Um, huh. <laughs> I assume more will be, like, shown at, like, BlizzCon or something like that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so, I mean, that actually could be kind of neat. And really, that's yeah. that's it. Because, I mean, Uncanny X-Men's coming back, so they're going to cancel all the other X-Books, I, I guess. Oh. Um, not all of them, but they're... Right now, there are three... There are four, like books with the word x-men in it um i think one of at least one of them is sticking around maybe two um x-men blue and gold are both being are both ending in like september okay um so it looks like they might just be relaunching one of those as uncanny x-men sure because like x-men doesn't really have a flagship title like usually when you have like those groups of books one of them is considered like your your main title Mm -hmm. so like for batman out of all of the batman centric books the book that is just called Batman is the flagship. Yeah. Um, for Spider-Man, it's always Amazing Spider-Man, regardless of what other books might be happening. Yeah. Um, this might be them trying to get that back on track. They're also going to do a bunch of one-shots called X-Men Black that will be one-shots of villain stories from different creators. Okay. Like, they're going to do, like, um, I, I know Magneto was on the list, Mystique was on the list, Mojo was on the list, so. Could but, be uh, pretty interesting. Probably not. No. <laughs> eh. I don't know. Like, X-Men has some decent villains. It does, but when you do these one-shots, they're usually not very good. Yeah, true. Um, I'm just double-checking this list. I think that's everything. 
They announced like a bunch of like Spider-Man stuff, but like none of it was super interesting. Like there's going to be Spider-Geddon and the new Spider-Gwen book and a couple. There's going to be a Spider-Girls book where it's like three different versions of Spider-Girl are going to be like coming together. But I think that's like a mini series. Okay. There's going to be a book with Kane and some other spider characters. Okay. They, so. they love their Spider-Verse. I mean, Spider-Man is their flagship character. He is right now. No, I mean, he always has been. Like, Spider-Man is Marvel's flagship character. That's why if you go back into, like, the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, um, all of the books in the top right corner, like, where the um, where the barcode and the price and all were, were almost always a picture of Spider-Man. Okay. And yeah. depending on, like, what year it was, there would be a different Spider-Man. If it was, like, in that mid-80s where he was in the black suit, it would be Black Spider-Man. If it was any other time, it would be the red and black Spider-Man. Okay. Or the red and blue Spider-Man. Like. That's nuts. So much Spider-Man. Yep. 50-some-odd years of it. That's nuts. Just, I mean, they, he got up to 108 before they renumbered it again. <laughs> 50 some odd years of it, and he's I'm sorry. still like 30. So somebody once did a thing where they like broke down sort of like how how much time has to pass in like the real world for like Marvel years. I think it's every five years in our world is one year in Marvel time or something. Just about, yeah. Because um, like most characters have aged. You yeah. have some of the weird ones though that like Pete was like 15 or 16 when he got his powers but like most of the other heroes were still around at that time too yeah so that that's always weird like tony stark's got to be at least 20 years older than pete if pete's 30 now tony stark's got to be 50 he doesn't look 50 in the comics no and i mean like like the excuse you have is like captain america like why would captain america look 50 when he has this super soldier serum that's kind of keeping him young mm -hmm. but then like there's other like there's always like some weirdness with that they all have uh, Wolverine's anti-aging ability. I don't they think that's true. Got a little bit of Wolverine in all of them. But um, bumps. No. Eh. Wow. It wasn't meant that way. Or was it? It's just like just like when we played D and D and how many undead jokes I made, and then I wasn't trying to do that. D yes, you were. No, wow. I really wasn't. It was literally just happenstance. Like it was ridiculous. I don't believe that at all. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, we played D and D. What was it? Two weeks ago yep. on a Friday. And I was being the DM, and there's so many times I made, like, just punny instances, because they're in an undead society that, like, they actually live and thrive and talk. And I just made so many, like, undead puns inadvertently, and it just, like, it was just, the the whole night, I was just like, I hate myself. Yep. I think they all hated you, too. From the no, they it. loved it. I had Jordan might have hated it, but the rest of them loved it. All they, right. they were all right. They were, they were unintentionally funny. I can't remember what they are anymore, though. Me either. Because they were puns. Yeah. The lowest form of comedy. Anything else? No, I was waiting for you guys to finish talking about D&D. &D. No, nothing else to talk about. Well, that's our show, then. Yeah. Get it done early. There was a lot of interruptions. Kind of a crazy couple it, of weeks. It was still like a two-hour show, almost. Yeah, not yeah. too bad. Um, But yeah, so if you'd like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. If you like to help us out, you can support us over at patreon.com slash onequest. We are on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash onequest online. Twitter and Instagram are at one underscore quest. Yep. YouTube is youtube.com slash onequest video. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find all of our other podcasts on all those services, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, basically any place you want to get podcasts. And if you could... Go throw us a rating or whatever option they give you on said platform. That would be awesome. Um, and you can always email us, social at one-quest.com, with uh, questions, comments, concerns, or anything else. And that will do it. We will be back next week with something not San Diego Comic-Con related. Hopefully more to talk about. So That'll probably be very little to talk about. It's the summer. No, and by that I mean, like, we do stuff. You so. motherfuckers play games is what Fine. he's saying. Fine. Not Monster Hunter. You play Sunset Overdrive, a six-year-old game. <laughs> Fine. You want me to play something new? That is new to you, at hey. least. It is still in the shrink wrap. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.